Welcome to Space Claim. In this section, we'll be looking at the user interface. We'd like you to get familiar with common areas on the screen and what their uses are. To start, when you open Space Claim for the first time, you'll have a welcome screen. This will link you to common areas on the website, such as customer support, quick reference cards, and tutorials. One thing I suggest is looking at the quick reference card. The quick reference card will contain common actions in SpaceClaim, such as select, orientation, vocab, and shortcuts we use in our tool. Printing this out and keeping it handy will really help you get started and up to speed with SpaceClaim. If you happen to close the welcome screen, don't worry. Every time you open up SpaceClaim, it will appear. But also, the shortcuts that are here are also commonly located in the tool. Let's close the welcome screen and get to know our interface inside of SpaceClaim. We'll be showing you different areas you can find different tasks on screen. To start with, we'll go to the top left-hand corner. You'll notice in the corner to the top left, we have our quick access toolbar. This will contain common actions such as open, save, undo, redo, plus any other tools that you'd like to add. Moving down, we have our file menu. This also contains open, save, common file operations such as print, and we'll get into this a little bit later in addition to our space claim options. Moving across from here, you'll notice space claim is set up with tabs. Different tools are grouped into different tabs, and inside each tab, we've grouped our tools into categories called groups. Notice all of our orient tools are related to navigating and rotating the model, and all of our sketch tools are, of course, geared towards sketching. We'll go over the tabs in detail shortly. Moving down from here, we have panels on the left side of the screen. To start, there's three main panels you should know what they do and what they're used for. The structure tree is very important. This will contain all the objects on screen. These could be solids, components, planes, axes, and surfaces. And a number of other things can be located here as well. In this case, there's one solid on screen, so we have one solid in the structure tree. Moving down from here, we have options. I like to talk about our options and our tool guides together. Both of these will drive what a tool does. Tool guides will change the behavior and guide you through an operation, and options will tweak those behaviors. You notice in pull versus move, we have different tool guides and different options. If you need to change the way a tool is operating, look for the tool guides and your options to do this. Beneath this, we have our properties panel. You'll have properties for what's selected on the model. Notice in this case, it's giving us our face type that's there. If we select the solid itself, you notice we can add a material property to this. Properties will be very important when doing detailed drawing sheets later on. Moving down from here, you'll notice we have our status bar on the bottom of the screen. Status bar contains a few different things on screen. First of all, it's an information panel to let you know what's going on with your model. In this case, it says select and drag a face to offset it. This is the same message that you'll get in the upper left-hand corner of our design window. Speaking of design window, this entire box will be the design window. This is the geometry that you're actively working on on screen. Now, to continue with the status bar on the bottom of the screen, on the right, we have different selection tools. You'll notice you have quick shortcuts to spin, pan, and also zoom into the model, and also selection tools as well. Now, to move up, let's say I select on something. One thing I don't want to miss is going to be our mini toolbar. When you're in an operation like pull, or move, or combine, depending on what you select, you'll get different messages that are here that quickly pop up to help you change your actions. These will almost always be a subset of the most common options which you can use for that particular tool. 
This helps to remove a lot of windshield wiper action as you're trying to use the tools. Lastly in this section, I'd like to talk about our help menu. Help can be located in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And the shortcut for help is going to be the F1 key. So simply hitting the F1 key on your keyboard will bring up the help menu. When you're looking at the help menu, there's different ways to search through it. Help can be navigated by going through the different topics as seen here. There's commonly videos and pictures contained in the help. And you can also search for different tools and different topics. If you search for dimension, you'll see a number of different topics on dimensions and how to use them and drive them inside the tool. Also notice, as you hover over the different tools, you'll get a tool tip on them. This will give you more information on the tool. In parentheses, it will give you any shortcuts that's there. And at the bottom, you'll notice, press F1 for more help. This will bring you into context-sensitive help on that particular tool without searching for it. Now, if you see one of the tools which is grayed out, such as paste, we commonly will include description at the bottom on how to enable this tool. To enable paste, you have to have something which has already been cut or copied, which makes sense. Now that we've looked at our help, let's look at the different tabs that are there, and I'll walk you through some of them. Design is all about creating geometry. Notice we have ways to orient, to spin, pan, zoom the model. Buttons for spin, pan, zoom are located here as well. And the shortcuts for these, middle mouse button will spin, control plus the middle mouse button, by default will zoom, and shift press the middle mouse button will pan the model. Moving from left to right, you'll notice we have tools to design and create geometry, such as sketching, and then our four main tools, pull, move, fill, combine. You'll be using them a lot, and we'll be going over them in depth today. Pull lets us create geometry. You'll notice it creates things by revolving, sweeping, offsetting, extruding, a number of different ways. If you're looking to create geometry and modify it, most likely you'll be looking for pull. Translate and rotate is inside the move tool. This lets you change the location of things. Imagine taking a coffee cup and lifting it up. That would be translating the cup. To take a sip, you'd want to rotate it into your mouth. That would be rotating the model or rotating a feature on the model. Move is all about translating and rotating things. Fill is used to remove things from a model. It eliminates things by extending the faces around it. You need to remove or simplify something, you'll be looking for fill. And combine does all Boolean operations. It subtracts one thing from another part, or it merges two parts together. Our other tabs can also be used for other operations. Insert will add things to your file. You can insert different additional parts, like screws or clamps, insert standard holes, and also insert standard parts which you can download from either Trace Parts or Cadenas. Detail is all about drafting. Notice we have a lot of tools for adding dimensions, notes, and a huge section for annotations. Also, you'll notice certain tools are only available in the drawing sheet, such as formats and adding different views. Display controls how we visualize everything. We can change the color of parts and faces here. You can change the overall graphic style from hidden line to wireframe, and control what you're choosing to display and visualize on, on screen, such as turning on the world origin or turning it off. Measure controls how we look at the distance between things, and also, next to it we have the mass properties on the screen as well. This is all about interrogating the model. Repair has tools geared towards cleaning up imported geometry. Tools such as solidifying them into a watertight solid, or cleaning up 2D geometry we might import from a DWG or a DXF file. Prepare has tools getting ready for manufacturing and analysis, such as creating internal fluid volumes, enclosures around a model, 
or for manufacturing, recognizing holes, or creating workpieces. The last tab I'm going to get into is sheet metal. Sheet metal has a robust tools to let you convert imported sheet metal, design from scratch, and lastly, create a flat pattern of an unfold. Any tabs to the right of this will be add-ins. Spaceslim supports add-ins from various third-party vendors, and anything to the right of sheet metal will be these. Keyshot is an example of an add-in which lets you do rendering. The next thing I'd like to look at is going to be our file menu on the left side of the screen. Again, these are tools to create new designs, create a drawing sheet, different ways to save the design, different ways to share the design as well, print, and also your SpaceClaim options are located here. SpaceClaim options will help you control exactly what's going on in the tool. For example, let's look at a few common options that are here. Common options might be units. Units is something a lot of people like to change because they want to operate in metric or imperial. Remember, when changing these options, we have options that are set for this current session you're in, which would be this document, and you can change this so it affects all new documents that you're creating. Another common section in our options will be navigation. Again, by default, we hold the middle mouse button to spin, shift in the middle mouse button to pan, and control in the middle mouse button to zoom. However, for people coming from a different system, you may want to change the way you spin, pan, zoom. Here you can change the default shortcuts for spin, pan, and zoom. And also, this is where you can change the zoom. Some people prefer to zoom with the mouse wheel by rolling it in or out, which you can set here. The last thing I'd like to end with is looking at the panels one last time on the left side of the screen. Remember, I mentioned these panels have common properties, options for, for the different tools that we're in, and the structure tree which shows what's on screen. One thing I neglected to mention was that these panels can be placed simply by dragging them and dropping them to a different location. You notice we have boxes to lock them to different areas on the screen so they can be positioned wherever you'd like. You can also pin them to the side to increase the real estate of the design window. If you've made changes to your user interface or your options and you'd like to reset them, these can be found in the space claim options. The two places we'll want to go will be advanced. Advanced will allow you to reset all of your user settings to factory default. Any changes you've made to navigation, units, detailing, or popular options can be reset here. Notice when you do this, you'll have to restart SpaceClaim for them to be applied. The second place we can go to reset just the appearance will be under the Appearance tab. Notice we have a button here to reset the docking layout. By clicking this, it will reset all the panels to the common default we saw here, where we have structure tree, options, and properties. So remember, if you do happen to customize these and want to get them back, simply reset your docking. With that, I hope you've seen a little bit of the SpaceClaims user interface and know where to use the common tools and where to go to look for your information. Remember, our robust help system will help guide you towards different tools if you have any questions or need assistance.